Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Uh, today I am going to share with you another topic pertaining to our subject that is public speaking communication communication and public speaking. The topic is using language. Um, we have to know that when we present, of course, we use the language. Either it is Bahasa Melayu or English or other subject or I mean or other language, but we still use the language. So there is a need for you to prepare for your presentation not only um, the the slides or whatever visual aids that you bring in for your presentation, but you also have to prepare for the script of your, of your presentation and when you prepare a script it is very important for you to pay attention on the language use so in this topic i'm going to share with you um, tips on how can you come up with very good and proper language for your presentation okay so when you give a definition for example you have to know there is uh, two different definitions, two different kinds of definition. One is denotative and another one is connotative. What is denotative? Denotative is an, an extension of definition taken from, for example, a dictionary and it has a literal meaning of word and phrase. While connotative definition is a meaning that is suggested by associations or emotions triggered by words or phrase so when you want to have a definition of certain words for example during your presentation you need to have actually uh, both types of definition that is denotative as well as connotative because denotative is just a literal meaning of certain words while connotative is more, um, what we say, um, it gives you a clearer picture of what that particular word means, for example. Okay, when you want to choose a language for your presentation, when you want to compose a script, uh, four things that you have to bear in mind is you need to have your words accurate accurately selected you need to have your words clearly mentioned and you need to have your words vividly uh, displayed and you need to have your words that are appropriately taken and composed for your presentation so words that are not accurately and appropriately chosen or selected for the presentation will cause the presentation to be uh, a presentation that cannot be understood by the audience so the objective of the presentation that is to persuade the audience to believe on certain stand that you have will not be achieved that is why you need to be careful in selecting the the words <coughs> okay when we talk about the words there are several terms you need to know pertaining to the words the first one is abstract words so in a presentation in a public speaking a speaker uh, we can always see that a speaker likes to use different kinds of words okay and one of them is abstract words and i'm sure all of you know what is abstract words okay it refers to a uh, general concepts attitudes or even qualities and uh, as opposed to abstract words is um concrete words and concrete words is words that are more tangible it can be seen can be touched for example house desk chair um, computer, okay, camera, etc. All right, another term or another uh, figure of speech that always used by a speaker is imagery. Okay, what is imagery? It creates mental images of objects, actions, 
and ideas. Okay, I have a better uh, explanation on imagery. So usually it is thought that imagery makes use of particular words that create visual representation. So whenever speaker says something that has the imagery words, you as an audience can visualize okay, the thing that has been explained. Example given here, it was dark and dim in the forest. So when you hear the speaker says it was dark and dim in the forest, automatically you can visualize that the forest is very dark and very dim. So that is what we meant by imagery. Okay. So the words dark and dim are the imagery words because it visualizes uh, it visualizes the the surrounding of the night which is very dark and very dim okay next one another uh, figure of speech that always used by a speaker is comparison or simile have you heard of that word simile i'm sure some of you may have come across uh, the word simile okay it is actually uh, when you make comparison and you use the word like like or as okay example given here um, a, a better a better definition given here is simile refers to a figure of speech or a noun or a word involving the comparison of one thing with another thing of a different kind used to make a description more empathetic or more vivid remember just now i have just mentioned to you that you need to choose words that are very vivid and clear for your presentation so maybe in order to help you to produce vivid um, words to describe on certain things during your presentation you have to use simile okay example given here like as brave as lion so you are making comparison that lion is brave so uh, sorry um, you are making comparison that let's say you 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 want to say this boy is as brave as lion so you are comparing lion with the boy where the boy is as brave as lion or you can say the boy the boy is very brave like a lion it's the same thing okay okay apart from simile uh, a speaker also uses metaphor what is metaphor metaphor is also a comparison but it does not introduce a noun by make by making comparison using like or as okay unlike a simile it is a comparison that uses like the word like or the word as okay example given here mm. okay so another uh, better uh, better definition given here is a metaphor is a figure of speech that describes an object or action in a way that is not literally true but helps explain an idea or make a comparison it's just that you don't make comparison like the in simile okay example given um, the curtain of night fell upon us okay so what i understood when i studied um, public speaking metaphor is referring to a word that we use to make comparison but how are we going how what kind of comparison is that we make a thing as if uh, we make a thing com we sorry we compare a thing with something alive okay like example given here 
the curtain of night fell upon us. So, the word curtain, as if the curtain is alive, the curtain of night fell upon us. Actually, it wants to say that uh, we are approaching the night, the night, um, you know, from daytime to night. So, we are approaching towards the night. So, they want to use a metaphor. So, they use the curtain of night fell upon us. So, in this metaphor, the evening did not develop into a curtain. But, uh, it means that as if uh, we are being uh, enveloped by a curtain of night but actually the the actual meaning is we are approaching towards a, a, a day night okay all right mm, another example here like i what uh, another example like what i prepared here is america's cities are the windows through which the world looks at american society so I make comparison between American cities with American society and I would say that the cities in America are the windows okay but they are there there is no window actually but as if we can see the reflection we can see if you want to know the people we look at the window okay so as if the city is a window where we can see how the people look like. So that is metaphor. Okay. All right. Next one is rhythm. Okay. Rhythm is, I think everyone know, you have to uh, make your sentence rhyme. And usually this is applicable if you want to, uh, for example, you want to begin your presentation with a poetry. Okay. Maybe you compose a poetry, you compose a poem. So you have to make rhythm. Um, still, even without a poetry, you can still have you know a number of sentences rhyme with certain rhythm, so that it sounds very nice to hear. Okay. Um, okay. Next one is parallelism. This is another figure of speech, and parallel. Parallelism is often referred to as one of the basic principles of grammar. Okay, so parallelism uses similar words, phrases, or clauses to show that ideas have the same level of importance. And this structure improves readability by giving a natural flow to a written work or your presentation. Okay. Um, actually, parallelism is quite popular in English language because native speakers, they like to use parallelism. For example, I like reading, writing, and painting. Okay? So, this is also fall under uh, rhythm. Instead, I like to read, writing, and painting. Okay? Alright. Um... Another example that I give in my notes is rich and poor, intelligent and ignorant, wise and foolish, virtuous and vicious, man and woman. It is ever the same. Each soul must depend wholly on itself. So that is parallelism. Okay, It means that it um, uses similar words, phrases or clauses to show that idea have the same level of importance. So, rich and poor, intelligence and ignorant, wise and foolish. They are uh, different words but have uh, the same level of importance. Next one is repetition. I, I know maybe all of you have heard of the word repetition. So, it is actually reiterating same words or set of words at the beginning or end of uh, certain sentences, okay? Um, so, repetition, example I give here, if not now, when? If not us, who? If not together, 
how. So I've been repeating the word if not. Okay. And why I use... Okay, repetition in English is not advisable. But at certain uh, conditions, it will help your uh, either your writing or your presentation be... Uh, um, sounds stunning because of the arrangement of the words okay like example I give if not now when if not us who if not together how so even though I've been repeating the same word if not if not if not but it doesn't sound um, uh, not nice right it doesn't sound um, um, you know, like redundant or what, but it, it gives a, a good taste of the sentence. Okay, next one is alliteration. It is actually repeating initial consonant in close or adjoining words, and I have a better um, definition. Alliteration is when you use words that have the same sound at the beginning okay uh, for example stella students synthesize sweet sentences uh, and example i give here our colleges our communities our countries should challenge hatred whenever we find it so that is alliteration we use uh, when we use words that have the same sound Okay, in the beginning, our colleges, our communities, our country. Okay, and this one, Stella, students synthesize sweet sentences. Okay, that is alliteration. So, let's say uh, you, you have to define, okay, what is alliteration. You have to define what is simile or you have to define what is rhythm. You can define it using your own words as long as you understand, okay, what each figure of speech means. Okay, next one is antithesis. If you want to know how to spell antithesis, you have to go to, you have to refer to my notes. I will upload in the goals. So, antithesis is a contrary or opposite opinion. Concept or characteristic, okay, I repeat. Antithesis is a contrary or opposite opinion, concept or characteristics. Okay. Um, example here. I think I want to take example from my notes. Um, okay. Example here. Ask not what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. So that is an opposite opinion. So that is what we call is and we call as antithesis. Okay, um, I think that's it about the language. Okay, basically, um, other tips for you to present is you have to make sure that um, your language is very inclusive. Okay, you have to avoid stereotyping. You need to uh, avoid being racist or gender bias or maybe attack certain religions or disability and you should not have sexual orientation, okay? Um, you know, whether you go, uh, you go for men or you go against women. Um... Okay, I think uh, that's it. When we talk about stereotyping, uh, stereotyping is the, the general perception that you believe and most of the society believe. That is stereotyping. And it is actually not true. Okay, for example, you might have in your mind that woman uh, is very weak, okay, and man is very strong, okay. In a real fact, it is not true, but that is 
what people believe so it is what we call as stereotyping okay i think that's it for the language um we will see uh, if we have time to go for another topic uh, one uh, we have two more uh, topics to cover before you sit for the final exam so i wish you all the best thank you assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh